Hi, I'm Ms. Kristen of the Oosterhout Free Library. This time of year, some of us will be getting together, celebrating Thanksgiving. What do you think of when you think about Thanksgiving? You might think about turkeys and yummy food and spending time with your family. But what do you know about the first Thanksgiving? Well, it happened in a place called Plymouth, Massachusetts, long ago, in 1621. That's over 400 years ago. Now, in school, you might have heard about pilgrims and Native Americans, or First Peoples, coming together for a special harvest dinner. But that's not the whole story. It doesn't really tell us much about who those First Peoples were from the Wampanoag tribes that are a very important part of that story. Well, today I have a book to share with you called Kipunamuk, Weachimum's Thanksgiving Story. In the story, a young girl named Maple and her brother, Quill, are out in their grandmother's garden. It's around the time of harvest called Kipunamuk. Nokomis, their grandmother, tells them about the first Thanksgiving and the three sisters, which are corn, beans, and squash. They're very important to the Wampanoag people and the first Thanksgiving, and you'll find out why they're so important in the book. You'll also hear some Wampanoag words, like Wampanoag, a first people's tribe. It means people of the first light. Kipunamuk, the time of harvest. Weachnum, corn. Nokomis, grandmother. Turtle Island, a name used by many first peoples for North America. And the Samp, a traditional Wampanoag dish, which is easy to make, and I'll share the recipe that the authors included so you can make your own. Now, let's get started with Kipunamuk, Wachum's Thanksgiving story. Kipunamuk, Wachum's Thanksgiving story. Written by Danielle Greendeer, Anthony Perry, and Alexis Bunton. Illustrated by Gary Meaches Sr. Published by Charles Bridge. Before you begin, this is the tale of the harvest feast shared by the newcomers and the Wampanoag people in 1621. The newcomers arrived in what is now Plymouth, Massachusetts, and colonized the ancestral homeland of the Wampanoag tribes. At the time of this first Thanksgiving, many tribes lived in the same area. They are often known as Indians or Native Americans. In this story, we call them First Peoples because they were the first to live on this land. The Wampanoag people have taken care of their land for at least 12,000 years. The Wampanoag people fish, hunt, and raise the three sisters, corn, beans, and squash. Over time, First Peoples developed deep knowledge about the ways that many plants, often called medicine, help bodies and minds stay healthy. I love your garden this time of year, said Maple. Me too. What shall we pick for lunch? Nokomis asked. How about crab apples? Maple suggested. No, choke cherries, Quill shouted. Those are both good medicine, Nokoma said. How about some weachimum as well? Yes, Mabel replied. She is such a good big sister to beans and squash. The three sisters, they grow together, Quill added. You're right. They feed people all over Turtle Island, Nokomis said, and they have many stories to tell. Can you tell us a story? Quill asked. How about the time Weachimun asked our Wampanoag ancestors to help the pilgrims? Nokomis replied. The first Thanksgiving? Maple asked. Some people call it that, Nokomis said. We call it Kipunamuk, the time of harvest. 
Here's what really happened. One frosty fall morning, a long time ago, a large boat with white sails approached the shore. Seagull circled above the boat, squawking. New people are coming! New people are coming! Hearing the news, Riachaman stretched her weary ears toward the sky. Who are these new people? she asked. Two winters had passed since many of the first peoples who cared for Riachaman passed on to the spirit world. Those who were not taken by sickness found new homes to ease their heavy hearts and rebuild their lives. Riachaman feared that this winter would be her last and called upon Fox for help. Fox looked up at Weachaman. Should we trust these newcomers? he asked. Stay close and watch what they do, Weachaman told Fox. Fall turned to winter. Weachaman and the other plants fell asleep. Fox watched the newcomers come ashore. He watched as they made their way into the forest. He watched them enter and abandon Weetu. He watched them take a cooking pot and a basket of Riachman seeds. Don't take us away, the seeds cried. We are waiting for the first peoples to come back in the spring to prepare our beds. We must grow first. But the newcomers could not hear the seeds. Their ears did not know the voices of the land. Fox watched the newcomers build homes on top of an empty village. He watched as they searched for food, but they could never find enough to eat. Many of the newcomers lost mothers, fathers, brothers, and sisters during the long, cold winter. The first peoples watched as well. News traveled fast among nearby tribes that newcomers had arrived. Nobody was sure what to make of them. For many years, others had traveled across the sea to hunt, fish, and trade. Some were friendly, and some were not. These new people seemed different. They were here to stay. Winter turned into spring. The sun warmed the earth. The newcomers continued their search for food. Riachaman awoke from her long slumber and thanked the creator for another season. She and her sisters, Beans and Squash, pushed through the ground and reached toward the sky. Fox returned to share what he had seen. The newcomers are hungry, Fox told the three sisters. They took Weachaman's seeds, but they don't know how to help them grow. Other animals came to hear what Fox had to say. We should help, Weachman said. I agree, Bean said. Our home is their home now. I think we should too, said Squash. People help us grow. We must help, Deer said. We agree to feed the people. In return, they care for the home we share. I wouldn't, said Fox. The newcomers don't know our world. Sometimes new people can seem scary, Rabbit said. The creator tells us to help all living things. This is how the world works. Yes, Duck and Turkey agreed. It's settled, said Riachman. We will send the first peoples to help the newcomers. Over the next few nights, Weachaman sent dreams to the first peoples with a message. Bring me and my sisters to the newcomers. They are hungry and need help. The first peoples listened. Their leader, Usamikwan, visited the newcomers. He could see that they wanted peace. Usamikwan introduced newcomers to Tisquantum. Spring turned into summer. Tisquantum showed the newcomers how to raise Weachaman and her sisters, Beans and Squash. 
He taught the newcomers how to feed fish and seaweed to Riachman to help her grow. Soon, Riachman's seeds pushed through the earth and climbed toward the sky. Beans wrapped around Riachman's strong stalks. Squash stretched her vines across the ground, keeping Riachman's bed cool and moist. Summer turned to fall. Riachman brimmed with food. So did beans and squash. Riachman smiled as the newcomers thanked to Squantum and the first peoples for their help. Kipunamuk, the time of harvest, had come. The newcomers prepared a feast to celebrate the first year in their new home. They fired muskets in celebration. Boom, boom, boom. Osamuikwan, warriors and other first people, arrived. They feasted for three days. That meal changed both our lives and theirs forever. Many Americans call it a day of thanksgiving. Many of our people call it a day of mourning. That's different from what we learn in school, said Maple. It was Riachamun and the other beings of the land, sea, and sky who made the newcomer's first harvest possible. That's right, Nakoma said. That is why we pray before we eat. Well, what did the newcomers and our ancestors eat, Nokomis? Kool asked. Many things. Succotash, duck, turkey, rabbit, deer, lobster, fish, pumpkins, cranberries, boiled bread, and the sump, Nokomis said. All this talk about food is making me hungry, Maple said. <laughs> Let's go make some lunch then, Nokomis laughed. And we'll enjoy every bite, said Quill. The End You should check this book out yourself to learn more interesting information about the Wampanoag tribes, their way of storytelling, their different harvest feasts, and a Wampanoag tradition of giving thanks. There's also a cool recipe for Nassamp, and if you look here, there's the real maple and quill. They both love to spend time listening to their grandmother, Nokomis, tell them Wampanoag stories. Check it out for yourself. That was so interesting. We learned a bit more about the Thanksgiving story and the Wampanoag people. It was so fun that the illustrator based the children in the story on one of the author's own children. It was also fantastic that all of the creators of the book are from different First Peoples tribes, including the Wampanoag. Now, in the story, we learned that the pilgrims, or the new people, didn't know how to grow enough food to keep them healthy through the long, cold winter. The Wampanoag showed the pilgrims how to grow the corn, beans, and squash together. This is known as the Three Sisters, which is very important to the Wampanoag and other First Peoples. There's also some science there, too. The beans provide nutrients for the soil that the corn and the squash needs. The beans also grow up in a vine, which helps the corn to stand tall in the wind. The squash covers the ground and prevents other plants like weeds from overcoming the other two plants. It also helps keep the soil moist. They all work together to help each other grow. The Wampanoag were very smart and connected to nature. They understood the plants and the land. They also knew that these plants were very nutritious and what they called good medicine. They have lots of nutrients and vitamins so that they could keep them healthy and well-fed throughout the long, cold winters. People today still plant the three sister gardens with corn, beans, and squash. A traditional food dish that the Wampanoag people eat that we heard about in the story is nasamp. It's made from cornmeal, nuts, berries, 
and fresh maple syrup. The authors included a recipe that I'm going to share with you today. You'll need an adult helper, one cup of cornmeal, one cup of dried or fresh berries, a half a cup of crushed walnuts, sunflower seeds, or other nuts of your choosing, two cups of water, and maple syrup to taste, and a timer. The instructions are very simple. First, you'll combine all ingredients except the maple syrup in a pot. Mix together and your adult helper can boil it for five minutes. You can keep track of the time. Then the adult helper can turn down the heat and simmer, stirring frequently for about 15 minutes. And I'll remember, you keep track of the time or until the water is absorbed. Then spoon it into bowls and drizzle some maple syrup on top and enjoy. That's the fun part. I'll include the directions in the description box below. For more activities designed and approved by the authors and creators at Bioneers, please look for the link in the description box below. You'll find more background information, learning activities, follow-up questions to the story, and several crafts, including how to make a simple corn husk doll. You can also learn more by checking out this video from Scholastic to let, see a modern demonstration of Wampanoag way of life 400 years ago. You can also listen to a traditional tale of the three sisters. I'll put a link in the description box below. Now here are just a few of the books that we have available at the library that you can explore further. I hope you had a good time. I hope you had a tasty time too. And I'll see you next time. Bye.